So probably the most challenging part of this chapter is going to be talking about geometries or shapes of molecules. Um, there's something called Vesper theory. I know it really spelled like the Sepper, but everybody says Vesper theory, which stands for valence shell, electron pair, repulsion theory. All that says is that the pairs of electrons, whether they're bonded pairs or lone pairs, determines the shape or the geometry of the molecule, okay? Because the electron pairs in the valence shell are going to repel each other and try to get as far away from each other as they possibly can. So I'll start this video by trying to explain what this means, and then I'll summarize all of the geometries in a way that I think will help you organize them. So let's look at something like CH4. Okay, this is its Lewis structure. And you'll notice that there's four bonds, okay? There's four pairs of electrons around carbon, all trying to get as far away from each other as they possibly can. Now, in the two-dimensional flat surface here, it looks like it should be 90 degrees. But the world is three-dimensional, so they can actually get farther apart than that, okay? They can get 109.5 degrees apart, okay? The shape that they take is called tetrahedral. You're going to see tetrahedral anytime there's four bonds and no lone pairs around the central atom. Okay, and 109.5 is an angle that you're going to need to remember. Okay, you're going to use this number so often you'll you'll remember it. What if we look at NH3? Okay, it's got three single bonds, right, and it's got a lone pair. So there's still four pairs of electrons all trying to get as far away from each other as they possibly can. So it's sort of the same geometry, but instead of having a bond up here, there's a lone pair. And we only do the geometries based on where the atoms are, not where the electrons are. So the angle still is about 109.5, but it has a new name now. It's called trigonal pyramidal or just pyramidal. I usually just say pyramidal. So I said the angle was going to be about 109.5, but there's a deal where lone pairs repel more than bonded pairs. They kind of spread out a bit, right? And they, they push the other molecules or atoms closer together. So it's actually less than 109.5. So when you give the geometry for pyramidal, it's going to be less than 109.5. What if we look at water? Water has two single bonds and two lone pairs. Again, there's still four pairs of electrons all trying to get as far away from each other as they can. And instead of having bonds here, right, there's lone pairs. Okay, so we call this geometry bent. And once again, the angle is just less than 109.5 degrees. The less than because lone pairs repel more than bonded pairs. These lone pairs repel more than these bonded pairs. So just less than. So what I'm going to do these next few is I'm going to try to summarize all of um, the geometries for you in a way that maybe you can remember. So I'm going to start with what happens when I have molecules with two terminal atoms. Well, what does that mean? That means the number of atoms attached to the central atom. So for SO2, there's two O's attached to the S. For water, there's two H's attached to the O. For I3-, minus, there's two I's attached to the central I. For CO2, there's two O's attached to the C. So the rule is, when you have two terminal atoms and one lone pair, okay, here's your lone pair, it's going to form bent, okay, and when you have two bonds, two terminal atoms, and two lone pairs, okay, it's also going to form bent, although the angles will be different, and if you have three lone pairs, right, here's one, two, three, an expanded octet, or no lone pairs, the geometry is linear. If it's linear, the angle is 180 degrees, right? It's in a straight line. Now, if it's bent with one lone pair, it's less than 120 degrees. OK, 
because 120 degrees is as far apart as three things could get, but lone pairs repel more, so less than 120. And we've already done this one. This is less than 109.5. So those are the geometries that you would see with two terminal atoms. Well, what if I had three terminal atoms? Okay. Again, like SO3, PH3, ICL3. It all depends on three terminal atoms and zero lone pairs is trigonal planar. One lone pair is pyramidal. Two lone pairs is called T-shaped. Okay, trigonal planar, 120 degrees. You can see that that's as far apart as three things could get. Trigonal planar, we already, trigonal pyramidal, we already did, less than 109.5 degrees. And T-shaped, um, if you can see, you've got two angles here. You've got 90 degrees and you've got 180 degrees. So it's 90 and 180. Now if you have four terminal atoms, okay, there's three different choices. Four with no lone pairs, four with one lone pair, and four with two lone pairs. Tetrahedral, seesaw, you'll see why it's called seesaw when we make the model, and square planar. Tetrahedral, we already did, right, is 109.5 degrees. Seesaw, there's actually three different angles in there. There's a 90, a 120, and a 180. Let's see if you can see them. There's the 180, there's the 90, and between these two is 120. Okay, and for square planar, you've got 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So you'll see there are getting to be fewer options here now. When I have five terminal atoms, if it has no lone pairs, it's called trigonal bipyramidal. Yikes. And with one lone pair, it's called square pyramidal. Okay. Trigonal bipyramidal, again, has a 90 degrees, 120 degrees, and a 180 degrees. For square pyramidal, um, that was a little harder to see but it's got 90 and 180. You're going to make models of these so you can see what the angles will look like. For six terminal atoms, there's only one choice, and it is called octahedral, and you have 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Now, if you're not a little overwhelmed by all of that information, then I'll be kind of shocked. So I'm going to help you make note cards, flashcards, and see if we can get that organized in such a way that you can learn these geometries. But it is kind of challenging. This is the part of the chapter where some of you are going to stress out a little bit. So be patient, and we'll get them all learned, and we'll build models, and we'll see what they look like. Okay? That's it, though.